In the next four minutes, we'll try to demystify Visual Web GUI's unique abilities and present the architecture that makes Visual Web GUI so responsive, secure, and flexible. We'll dive deep into the heart of its on-server, secure-by-design architecture and get a better understanding of its decoupled UI controls, which enable Visual Web GUI to switch presentation layers at the push of a button. Okay, let's go over Visual Web GUI's architecture. On the client side, we've got a standard browser such as Internet Explorer or Firefox running either standard HTML, JavaScript, or Silverlight. On the server side, we've got the Visual Web GUI router, which handles the mapping between the application URLs and the actual code. We've got the Web GUI configuration, which adds relevant application level properties. And finally, the actual application code. So when we hit a Visual Web GUI URL, what happens is the request hits the Visual Web GUI router and is mapped to an application. The application is initialized with relevant configuration properties, its initial state is sent back to the browser along with the Visual Web GUI kernel. The 200K kernel is responsible for all of the rendering and communications tasks on the client. From there on, every time the user does something, an event is fired to the back end, and the event is processed by the application generating differential metadata, state changes. These changes which average around 1K are sent back to the client, and the view is updated. Visual Web GUI optimizes the traffic with a unique mechanism which classifies events and fires only critical events the server must know about. This is a crucial component in making it so responsive. Developers such as MS MVP Victor Zekla and Network D's Mark Reed have reported 300 to 400% improvements in responsiveness. Visual Web GUI is secured by design. To get a better understanding of the design, let's look at the application layers. We've got the browser with the Visual Web GUI kernel handling client-side event capture and client-side view rendering. We've got the Visual Web GUI components dealing with the UI logic and processing the UI events. And finally, we've got the actual business components, which are completely server-side and can even reside on a separate layer. In a secure architecture, the business components may actually reside on a separate server exposed as remote objects or web services. The only data being transferred back and forth between the browser and the Visual Web GUI application is view-related metadata changes. Access to back-end business objects is managed solely on the server. So to sum up the security issues, Visual Web GUI applications never expose any services, tokens, connection strings, or business logic on the client. The only data that's exposed to the client is the data the user is intended to view. It all boils down to a security by design architecture, which is easier to protect, because if nothing's exposed, there's nothing to protect. If we look at a block diagram of Visual Web GUI's architecture, we see the first three blocks look familiar. We have IIS, the .NET Framework, or CLR, and the ASP.NET Base Object. Visual Web GUI works atop ASP.NET and inherits from the ASP.NET base object. Then we see the Visual Web GUI router, pipeline, and controls, the Visual Web GUI application components side by side with the ASP.NET router, pipeline, controls, and application components. Visual Web GUI and ASP.NET continue to work side by side and e can even interoperate sharing the same context and base objects. Visual Web GUI basically decouples the presentation rendering or view from the actual UI logic. It coordinates the view state via proprietary XML protocol which sends events from the client to the server and receives incremental op optimized UI updates. Visual Web GUI's initial presentation layer is the HTML presentation kernel. We will soon release a Silverlight presentation kernel which will